Jerry was 16 years old and waiting tables at a local diner when a stranger came in and asked for Leslie King. He described him and, and one of the workers pointed to Jerry and said, well, there's no Leslie King here, but there's a Jerry Ford. Well, the man came over and told Jerry that he was his father. <laughs> Jerry knew that this guy was crazy because he knew his dad, uh, his namesake, Jerry, was his true father. And he loved his dad. I mean, his dad took him to baseball games and helped coach him. He, he was a big part of his Boy Scouts. He helped him with his homework. He was a great father. And he went home that day after work and told his mom, you wouldn't believe it, this crazy guy came to work today asking for a Leslie King. <laughs> and her face turned white. She said, Jerry, I need you to sit down. And then she told him about a nightmare. She said, way before you were born, I met the man who came to the diner today. And he was charming and kind and we fell in love and we got married. But on our honeymoon, he beat me. And he would regularly beat me, even though we got pregnant right away with you. When you were born, we named you Leslie King, and I hoped that having a son would change him, but it didn't. And one night he came at us with a butcher knife, and I took you and I ran for our lives. I called my father and he took a train down and, and took us home and we got on our feet and we moved here to Michigan, and that's when I met Jerry. And when he married me, he also committed to being your dad. And we decided we were just gonna raise you as ours. And you were so little at the time, you didn't know. And I guess now is the time for you to know that uh, Jerry's not your real dad. Leslie is your real dad. But Jerry's a good man. And he's been a father to you ever since he moved into our lives. And Jerry was dumbstruck. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine what that would do to a 16-year-old boy wondering, like, who, who am I now? What is my identity? But instead of going into a tailspin, Jerry made a decision. He said, Jerry is my dad, and this is who I am. I reject the past. I'm not going to take the characteristics of my biological father. I want to be like, like Jerry. Well, Jerry was uh, athletic and, and great with people. He wasn't always the smartest man in the room, but he always had more common sense than anyone else. And he decided to go into politics. And uh, his goal, his dream in life was to be a Speaker of the House. Well, that never happened to him. In 25 years, um, he worked in Congress and uh, did his job. He was great friends with Tip O'Neill, who was the leader of the Democrats. In fact, he and Tip O'Neill would argue and fight it out um, on the floors of Congress. And then that night, Tip would come over for dinner and eat with the kids. Uh, Gerald Ford told his son that, you know, you can't really do politics with someone uh, who you don't know the names of their kids and where they want to go to college and what his favorite drink is. Um, I think Gerald Ford would be horrified <laughs> to know about the politics that we have uh, today. Well, one day his wife, who never really wanted him to go into politics, um, talked to him and said, Gerald, it's time for us to go home. Um, I think it's time for you to retire. Let's go back to Michigan. I'm, I'm tired of this politics. And Gerald Ford said, okay, you're right. Let's do it. And just a couple of days later, he got a phone call from Richard Nixon. Uh, they were actually eating I think it was spaghetti at the dinner table and the phone rang and um, Gerald Ford got up and answered the phone and turned out to be the president. He's like, um, Mr. President, uh, this is an honor. What, what can I do for you? And the president said, well, you can be my vice president. You see Nixon's vice president um, had to resign due to some fraud and tax evasion scandals. And so all of a sudden Gerald Ford found himself as, as vice president. And his wife was not happy. She was like, Gerald, we were going home. And he said, honey, don't worry about it. Vice presidents don't do anything. Well, just a couple of months later, 
Richard Nixon resigned. And Gerald Ford became our very first president who was never elected by the nation. He was elected by his state, but he was never elected to be vice president or president. He found himself sitting as the president. And Ford had to make a really important decision. He had to decide what he was gonna do with Richard Nixon. You see, Nixon had broken some laws and uh, he probably deserved to go to jail. And Ford knew what would happen to the country if they followed through with that whole process. The Watergate scandal, which was killing America, um, it was destroying the, the the, the goodwill feelings at home and hurting them abroad um, was just gonna last for probably two or three more years and everyone's gonna be looking at the cases and the, what's happening in the courtroom and the arguments. And Ford said, America cannot handle three more years of this scandal. We have got to move on. And so he pardoned Nixon and it probably destroyed his political career as far as trying to become president um, for the next term. People were, were enraged. They said, this is corruption to the highest level. But Bob Woodward, um, a reporter for the Post, um, interviewed Ford. And at the time, Woodward thought that Ford was a crook. Um, but later he came to change his mind and realized that Ford made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, that Ford did what was best for the country, but probably worse for his political career. And Ford made lots of those decisions. It started when he was 16. He had to decide, who am I going to be? Am I going to be the son of an abusive man? Or am I going to be the son of a good man? And Ford made the right decision. And the same thing happened in the White House when he had to decide, how am I going to handle the Russians? What am I going to do with the economy? How am I going to handle this Richard Nixon scandal? And while you might disagree with Ford's decisions, no one can disagree that he always did what he thought was the right thing to do. And if you look at the, the careers of uh, Kennedy, LBJ, and Nixon, you got three guys who are very, very famous, but if you study into their presidencies, they always did what was best for them, for their next election. And the people in America had, had lost faith in the president. And even though Gerald Ford did something that did not restore the faith to the presidency because he was misunderstood, he started taking the right steps. He started doing the right thing. You see, Ford realized that his reputation was not as important as his character. You see, we all have two fathers in our lives. We have a father of darkness who tells us that we're sinners and we're awful and we're gonna do bad things and we're a disappointment. He abuses us with his accusations and his words. He attacks our bodies with diseases and disasters. And he says, you are mine. You are bad. We also have another father. And this father is good. And he has poured his love into us. He has protected us and guided us. He sent his son to die for us. And he has said, I am adopting you as my child. And we have a decision to make. We can choose our father. And that choice is going to affect lots of other choices down the road. If we choose the father of darkness, we'll end up making lots of choices that are selfish, self-serving, and hurtful to others. But if we choose our heavenly father, we'll probably make some choices that are unpopular. Maybe even make some choices that will hurt us politically or economically or even with some relationships. But like Gerald Ford, we won't have trouble going to sleep at night. And even if we lose a big election, we'll know we always did the right thing, or at least we tried to do the right thing. Today you have a choice. You can pick your dad. You can pick your destiny. You can choose darkness or light. You can choose selfishness or character. I know you'll do the right thing because you have a good heart. Life is hard, but God is good. He believes in you and he loves you and he wants you to know that today, God's got this. God bless.